you can take care of him. Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for our Village of Elsa committee meeting. Today's July 29th, 2019. We'll call this meeting order at 7.30. Uh, can you call the roll, please? Sure. Uh, Trustee Delzell? Here. Trustee Zielinski? Here. Trustee Juarez? Here. Trustee McLaughlin? Here. Trustee Murphy? He, you know, he actually just sent me know he's running late. Okay. Trustee Nava Esparza? Here. Tr uh, Mayor Ryan? Here. We have a quorum. Good. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the first order of business tonight, folks, we have a bid opening for the replacement of overhead doors and operators for both um, fire stations, firehouses. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, the first bid we received is from Two Construction, and it's T. I'm sorry, TMO Construction at 11720 South Lamont in Alsip, Illinois 60803. They have included a check. In lieu of the bid bond. And their total bid is $61,768 even. That's 6176800. The second bid we received is from Conematic, K-O-N-E-M-A-T-I-C, Incorporated, BDA Door Systems, 2019 Corporate Lane, Suite 159, Naperville, Illinois, 60563. Chief Sosinski, how many doors again were we talking? Six doors and 12 operators. Okay. They have included a bid bond, and their bid is fifty seven thousand three hundred seventy one dollars. That is 57371.00. And the third bid we received is from A Better Door and Dock Services at 19015 Jody, J O D I Road, Unit B Like Boy, Mokina, Illinois, 60448. Could I ask you just to verify that they're not including anything extra in these two since they've separated them before we add them together? Yeah, one for the overhead doors and one for Okay, I just wanted to make sure we didn't have any issues again. Um, they have included two separate checks um, to cover, I'm sorry, copies of. Um, cashier's checks to cover the cost of the bid bonds.
Okay, their proposal for the 12 operators is $41,664.00. That's 41664.00. And for the six doors, their proposal is $27,852 even. So 27852.00. And that totals sixty nine thousand five hundred sixteen dollars. And that is all, Mayor Ryan. That's it. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, board. I have to ask everybody. We have to uh, I take a couple items out of uh, out of order here this evening. Uh, in the interest of trying to help, we've got some personnel here that uh, need to address the board uh, right away. I hate holding people up if I don't have to, ladies and gentlemen. But we're going to have to adjourn to a closed session uh, right now uh, just for a short meeting and then we'll continue the rest of our meeting after which um, I'll read this in we're going to go into a closed session to discuss collective negotiated matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees pursuant to 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 chapter 2 requested by myself and also we need to discuss the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body. In hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2, Chapter 1, again requested by myself. We'll make Thank the you, motion, Mayor. Mayor. Thank you. Second. Second. Roll call number one to adjourn, uh, I'm sorry, to recess, to yes. close session. Thank you. Uh, first is to discuss collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C2 and also to discuss the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C1. Again, this is to roll call number one to recess to close session. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee McLaughlin. Yes. Trustee Murphy is absent at this time. Trustee Nava Esparza. Yes. Motion carries to recess to executive session at 7.37 p.m. Folks, we'll try to make this brief. Uh, if you would, please just be patient. We'll be back shortly, okay? Thank you. Next time you get to leave as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to thank everyone for their patience, and I'd like to call this meeting back to order at 8.17 p.m. We'll continue with the meeting. Uh, committee meeting. Uh, you know, we, there is um, an attorney present for the plan and zoning um, uh, regarding the uh, licensing of a prior, uh, I'm sorry, the um, approval for a license that's going to be coming up. Uh, Trustee uh, Juarez, could you speak to that, please, for your report, the plan and zoning? I have a request for an approval to rezone the property at 12530 South Springfield from I-2 Industrial to I-2 Industrial Special Use for an office, warehouse, and truck washing facility. The Planning and Zoning Commission had a vote of 6-0 at the meeting held July 10, 2019. Case number 2019-07-S-100. And I also have a presentation of a list of licenses dated July 5th through July 26, 2019. And also, the Planning Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 14, 2019, at 7.30 at the Village of Elsip Council Chambers. The Village of Elsip Plan Commission will be a hearing, will be hearing an application for variance in height for a new warehouse for property located at 12200 South Laramie, Elsip, Illinois, 60803. Parties wishing to be heard will be given the opportunity to do so. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, tr trustees, we have members of the um, business in question uh, that's uh, asking for this uh, variance 
uh, I'm sorry, not even a variance for the <coughs> I-2 special use. And uh, their attorney, uh, Peter Murphy, is with them as well, too. Um, did anyone have any questions for the organization uh, while we've got everybody here? Did not. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Murphy, yeah, if you, go ahead, if you wanted to speak to that at all, then, too. Just very briefly, um, as, as you stated, Mayor, uh, the... Um, as you stated before, Mayor, uh, this was approved unanimously by uh, Building and Zoning Commission uh, a few weeks ago. Um, my clients are here today, Anthony Aguilar and David Coral. Essentially, this is a truck wash. I think it's an appropriate use for the uh, property that they're in contract to purchase. Um, they in include a bunch of um, improvements to the property. It's going to also be um, environmentally a, a sound use, and there's going to be employment opportunities for the municipality as well in that they're going to be hiring uh, local um, uh, residents for uh, part of their work. Uh, they're here uh, behind me today. If the board would have any questions um, during their committee meeting as to approval of this or any more details of the business, we're happy to answer those for the board. Uh, my name is Anthony Aguilar. I'm the general manager at Quality Pressure Washing. Uh, everything Mr. Murphy said is pretty much spot on. Uh, we really hope that we get the opportunity to uh, operate out of Alsip and, and become a member of this wonderful community. We, uh, I was actually talking up your business um, Friday. I was at the grand opening down the corner from where you're at at GC America. And, um, again, just sharing with the ownership down there as well then, too. That, of course, they had folks in from Japan, Germany, Australia, and whatnot then, too. But um, I, I tell you, that building on the corner really complements everything that goes on in that whole um, industrial area then, too. So. Uh, I wish you guys the best, and, and I really hope everything works out well for you then, too. We'll have this on the agenda um, next Monday night for, to ask for approval, and um, I, I, I feel confident that we may get this done for you then, too. And I'm glad. Uh, thank you to the uh, uh, Mr. Grabcheck for your commission as well then, too, with the 6-0 recommendation. That makes our job a little bit easier then, too, to, to consider this. So thank you very much, Dan. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. There's a uh, thing in the minutes that talks about uh, Commissioner Kleiner had uh, asked for the documentation regarding the property tax and the property. Has that been? It has been done. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Yeah, if you could just sign that you spoke to us tonight, that's all. Okay. Um, continuing on with our reports, I had um, my report, just that, that uh, under my report this evening uh, was uh, our Director of Emergency Repre Preparedness, Chuck Teresi, is here tonight. Just to give us an update on the CERT program and other activity in your program. Go ahead, Chuck. Okay, thanks, Mayor. You may remember from uh, last year, sort of did a uh, DEP briefing. And this is the same time period now, so I wanted to do that and bring the board up to date on a couple of items. As I mentioned to the mayor before the meeting, it's pretty important uh, to uh, acknowledge the people that help assist with this, uh, what, what's the second class we just did. The, uh, the CERT course, because it, it's, it's up to about nine months. It takes about nine months from beginning to end, maybe even a little longer, of work that's involved with it. And I'd be amiss if I didn't acknowledge people along the way that assisted in this process. Uh, this should be in the, the board's, uh, your, your packet, your electronic packet. But I want to read, uh, like I did last year, sort of read it into the record. So I'm happy to report that the second class of 20 members, LSIP CERT Class 2, completed their final disaster scenario and graduated on Saturday, June 15th. Two additional members attended the course and will graduate after completing the necessary makeup classes. This outstanding group consisted of village and non-village residents. The CERT volunteers of all ages, 18 above, came from all walks of life and every person brought their own unique talents, abilities and dedication to serve as uh, volunteer community emergency response team members. In accordance with the village of Alsip CERT standard operating guidelines, the members will continue to be involved by attending periodic monthly training, participating on committees, and assisting the village and neighboring communities with emergency and non-emergency events. Special thanks in relation to the annual LSUP CERT Class 2. These are people along the way that assisted with the class itself. Of course, the mayor and the board of trustees and the village clerk, thank you for your help and support. Also, thanks, mayor, for coming out. It's two years in a row, and I hope each year the mayor came out to Help me distribute the backpacks and congratulate the members and uh, stayed around to see what was uh, what was happening. So I appreciate all your help that day for me, uh, with me as well, Mayor. I want to thank Becky Smith for promoting the program on Facebook and the Village Newsletter. Also, Police Department, Chief Miller, Debbie Dazell, Todd Gutkowski, 
for processing the background checks, the Elsip Marionette Park Library and Director Sarah Cottonero for hosting the CERT classes this year and last year, Reliable Fire Equipment, Deborah Horvath, Tina Studzinski, Cal Coleman, John Brennan for hosting the fire safety classes, Craig Gwaltney, District 126 Superintendent in Prairie Junior High School, also Michelle Higgins, Joanne Potsick, Rob Hadjasek for hosting the final scenario lunch and graduation ceremony. Tim Griffin from Bedford Park Fire Department. He's the coordinator of the crew and troop volunteer victims. The Bedford Park crew 2035, that's the adult volunteer victims, and troop 2035, the youth victims. Brian Massari and Scott Nering for technical services, advertising, and the identification cards. Dan Tribin, Water Commissioner, for providing an overhead map for disaster scenario. Erica Sutter from the printing press. CERT member Nympha Melicio for notarizing the IEM adult oath documents. Kathy Dracy for obta obtaining the food donations and coordinating breakfast and lunch. These were the instructors and helpers for the ELSIP CERT class along the way. The class itself, Sydney Motsley and Laura Braden from the ELSIP CERT team. John Brennan from Reliable Fire Equipment. Patty Edger from New Lenox CERT. Scott Freed from the ELSIP Fire Department. Dan Martin, New Lenox CERT. Joe Barron, Payless Fire Protection District. John Gray, ELSIP CERT, along with Tammy Rose and Arthur Petzl from ELSIP CERT. During the final scenario, we had some help from the Moulage team to prepare the volunteer victims prior to the uh, disaster scenario. That was Patty Edgett, Debbie Jones, Scott Thompson, and Mercy Nolan from New Lenox CERT. As far as the donations of food for the final scenario and the graduation day on that June 15th, we had donations from McDonald's at 11850 South Pulaski. Special thanks to Kiana Smith, Kevin Cameron for the breakfast sandwiches that they provided. Also assistance from Dunkin' Donuts at 4028 West 127th Street for donating for the uh, uh, donuts for breakfast. Jimmy John's at 12064 South Cicero, specifically Marco Pilka and Wraith Green providing the sandwich platter for lunch. And also Baracco's Pizza at 13445 South Cicero and Crestwood, uh, Nick Baracco for providing pizza for lunch. Uh, on a separate note, that was everything that was involved for the class itself. On a separate note, during my report, I want to acknowledge uh, some people for uh, assisting with the CERT monthly or special training that we have. As you saw or heard from what I read earlier, we have monthly training. Once they go through the 20-hour basic training, then there's monthly training. So I, I can't applaud the CERT team, these volunteer members, en en enough. Not only do they go through the 20 hours training, but there's, uh, there's meetings, sometimes there's optional trainings, and there's monthly training every month. And we all know how busy schedules can be, and they, they set aside their, their time to, uh, to come out and to assist the community, not just for the, the monthly trainings, but as you know, for the events. Uh, they've assisted at a lot of different events, including the Fun Fest this year, uh, up sometimes even out of town. This year we helped out with the Evergreen Park Parade. So you name it, if the uh, community needs help, they get the information to me, we put it out to the, uh, to the uh, CERT members, and then we go from there. I should mention at this point, too, with any of the department heads, and, and at some point, I'll meet with you and give you a, 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 you know, the standard operating guidelines, as, as I was telling Chief Staczynski today. If you ever need any help, uh, whether it be debris rem removal or traffic control, they've been trained for that. We're going to continue training for that. Or assistance at, at, you know, at, the, at various events or, or anything that you, can, that you can think of. If you ever need help when it comes to manpower, you let me know. I put the word out. And that's exactly how the, the CERT teams uh, operate. But we'll talk more about that when I get a chance to, to give the uh, standard operating guidelines and touch base with the department heads further. Uh, so on that certain month, monthly or special training, I want to thank Chief Tom Staczynski. He put on an Illinois Department of Transportation traffic control class. He agreed to do that again in the future because, as you know, we've got a new class each year, so we'll continue to do that. We followed that up with ELSA Police Officer Justin Riley did hands-on traffic control. So uh, th th we're, we're, getting to the, we're getting them to the point where besides just doing cross uh, assisting at, at crosswalks, they can actually assist with traffic control if need be at the intersections, and we'll continue, we'll continue that type of training. I want to thank Patty Edgett and Trish Buell for coming out from New Lenox CERT to help with uh, monthly training. Also, Jeanette Huber and Greg Hooper from the Elsa Park District. Uh, the Elsa Park District, any of their sites, both indoor or outdoor, are listed as a training site, and we've got certificates of insurance that goes along with that. I want to thank also Andy Huffnagel from Moraine Valley Co Community College, also a training site. Under miscellaneous assistance, I want to thank Deputy Chief Robert Ricker for assisting with radio communications. Shanae Hunter, I just alluded to, with help with uh, training-related certificates of insurance. She's been a 
a big help. Kent Olivan for grants and cert vehicle licensing. Marty Moran from Arlington Heights Fire Department assisted with the cert trailer to carpentry work for our trailer. Under coordination of monthly training and or assistance with cert supplies. Uh, under this category, last but not least, I want to thank the clerk's office, Sue Petzl, Eric O'Donnell, Violet uh, Regan, Elisa... Uh, Geis. 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 How do you say it? Geis. Geis. Tricky one. Geis. <laughs> Alyssa Geis and uh, Tiffany Litoborski. I also want to thank Catherine Gonzalez and Dawn, Ma uh, Dawn Mayer. Any questions? I just have one other uh, thing on a separate note in regards to the uh, Cook County multi jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan that we're working on. Some short information, but before I move on from that, any questions on the CERT, the program, information that I just provided? No, I, I will share with everyone r quickly that. Um, Again, we think I, I think 100% of the work you're doing, Chuck. We really appreciate it, as well the support you've got with the the police and fire department, and as all the other departments you mentioned yet too. Uh, again, uh, to the public, this is more than just um, a non-emergency emergency team that in support of the community. At the same time, we, we support other communities around us. I was uh, actually asked again this year, uh, July 3rd. It's the second year I've marched in the. Um, Fourth of July parade in Evergreen Park to represent ELSIP, and I was walking with the Worth Township uh, float, and um, you had your CERT members down 95th Street uh, controlling traffic, and that was pretty. That was pretty nice to see. You had about six or six or eight of your six members or seven, out there. Yeah. yeah, and I was really impressed to see your people out there, Chuck. They've uh, assisted in some of the um, festivities around here, and again, this helps us reduce overtime by our police and fire, or at least on the police side of life. And um, again, in support of our community, it's it's a great thing to have. Your engagement with the community, fire department engages all, uh, quite often with all their programs, and now the police even more so that with the uh, citizens uh, policing academy uh, too. Uh, I think the world of all, all three of you guys and, and more of the departments as well too. You're doing a great job. Um, some some departments like um, public works and um, obviously water, uh, more of a skilled. Uh, operation where you can't be touching their equipment, but everything that we can involve the public in, you guys are doing a great job. And that helps with any of the departments, whether it be water, public works, fire, police. We, we've got the vehicle to receive help from other you know, communities if need be. Right. And with the with, with both residents and non-residents being involved on this team, to your point, Mayor, we, we may very well be responding outside of town as well. Mm -hmm. and it could actually be uh, you know regional responses or even state or national if they were to go that far. It'd be a far chance of that happening but technically you know you can't so thanks and actually uh, we, we actually John Gray who almost showed up today because you know how John is he's like oh I want he heard that we were going to be here one of the members of the CERT team and then he got stuck at work but but uh, we would have had John Gray if he showed up and we've got Sue Petzl and Art Petzl CERT members that are here today and I almost think of them think of the think of you as sort of representing the CERT you know the cert team as as well so thank you for, mm -hmm. for for your service and and for your for volunteering I really appreciate it and at some point as this goes on similar to like new lennox they've got an awards uh program that they utilize after a certain amount of hours through the presidential uh through through washington and we're going to be implementing that so it's not too long mayor before we start getting to those hitting those hours where we do something similar like we do in new lennox where we hand out it's almost like gold medals silver medals bronze medals for service for their time after 100 hours, 200 hours, and all of that. And I'm planning on doing that at some point, so I'll be calling on you when we get a chance to acknowledge them. Very good. And then uh, one other thing uh, important, we've been working on the 2019 Cook County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan through, uh, through the county. Let me read this into the record. Uh, an email in relation to the current status of our hazard mitigation plan was sent to the village board members and the department heads last Monday, July 22nd, 2019. I've been updating the members, uh, you know, along the way with this, and, and Mayor, you, you know full well as well that they, they contacted uh, the mayor's office through the county with regards to all of this to bring you up to date on it as well early on. Over the past couple of months, I've completed and submitted all the necessary documents to the Cook County Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Thanks to Dan Tribin and Mike Crater for providing four new mitigation project action items. The county required at least one new action item per jurisdiction. Therefore, the Cook County Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, they were very happy and appreciative of the information that the Village of Elsa pr provided. Thanks also to my co-chair, Elsa Chief uh, Stasinski, the co-chair along with me on the uh, Elsa Committee. 
After the plan is reviewed and approved by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, later this summer or fall, the Cook County Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management will request that each jurisdiction formally adopts the plan. Specific instructions on the adoption process, which will require a resolution, will be sent as a template, and further instructions will be provided in the near future. So the bottom line is we're caught up. They're extremely happy with us. We didn't just provide the one, but we, we, we provided four. Uh, which they thought was was you know was a, a real good thing, and now we're waiting. We, we we did all of that work. Now we're waiting on them to send us information for the, uh, the 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 last part of it, the resolution and adoption of the plan, and then we'll be set for five years again. Every five years, the Cook County Homeland Security is required to do this. Each year, as you know, we have a review, so we'll have a sort of a shorter update annually. But the big one is the one we're going through right now, which is every five years. So we're up to date, and again, appreciate everybody's help, and specifically uh, thanks to the board for all your help and support of, uh, of the CERT and, and everything that I'm doing with this department. Thank you again, Chuck, for your report on the um, community emergency response team. Very good. Any questions, trustees? No. Very good. Okay, thanks again, Chuck. Moving on, then, we'll have the <coughs> clerk's report, Clerk Petzl. Um, thank you, Mayor. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge that Trustee Murphy is now present when we return from executive session at um, 8.17 p.m. Um, secondly, I did want to go back to um, make a clarification on the bid opening. A better door and dock services had included copies of the cashier's checks that had been presented with their original bid. Um, one of the cashier's checks is for $2,743.20. The other cashier's check is for $3,189.50. So that's slightly less than the normal bid bond, but I just wanted that in the record. Um, thank you. And lastly, my report is presentation of the June 2019 motor fuel tax allotment in the amount of $35,647.86. That is all, Mayor Ryan. Thank you. Public forum, anyone in the audience wish to address the board this evening? No one? Thank you. Uh, next, we'll do the Stank Committee Reports Finance Committee. Trustee McLaurin. Next week, I will have the usual list of payroll and accounts payable for approval. And that's all I have, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Uh, Fire Committee, Trustee Murphy. No report tonight, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Um, police and Traffic Safety, Trustee Dalzell. Uh, we'll have a presentation of the Police Department June 2019 Monthly Activity Report. Then also the discussion to withdraw the purchase of three Chevy Tahoes from Curie Chevrolet, as they uh, provided misquotes, and a request for approval to purchase three Ford Explorer police interceptors from Curie Ford, which is now the lowest bidder, at a cost not to exceed $104,000. Uh, lastly is a discussion to include uh, regarding the two RFPs submitted, and uh, I'm going to table that discussion until our this evening's uh, special meeting. That's all I have, Mayor. Um, Chief Miller, just uh, again, the interceptor is still, we're still getting explorers, right? Right. Okay. And I'm sorry, Chief, that didn't work out too. I was really looking forward to those uh, Tahoes and stuff, but you and I talked about that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. Thank you, Chief. Uh, next, Public Works and Boat Launch, Trustee Juarez. I have a request for approval to go out to bid for removal and replacement of sidewalks throughout the village in various locations up to 8,000 square feet. And I have a request for approval to post for the hiring of one full-time Class 2 operator due to the resignation of Class 2 operator Tony Stislowski. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Mike, just... How many year, year, how many years did Tony have with your your uh, team? Uh, two years. Thank you. Uh, Sewer and water report, Trustee Navas Barza. No report tonight, Mayor. Um, you know, one thing, uh, Danny. Uh, just recently, we were just talking about this. Um, I just signed off on some some permits. Then I or where we where do we stand on the then the water man the east side of Pulaski? Yeah. Or you can stand at the tall one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the IE permit has been submitted. Um, as soon as we get you know, approval from the IEPA on that, we will be going out to bid for the construction of that water main. 
Okay. Um, okay. I, I thought we had one. Uh, so we're still on hold a little bit with. Um, we getting obviously. How long do you think, Dan, before we can get that line in? It, it well, construction is not due to be completed until late October, November. Okay. And we're still okay with the tenants uh, at one nineteen thirty three. Okay. Yes, currently. All right. We just asked for their patience while we're trying to get this done. They're trying to wrap up their project, and while we're helping each other per se, this is slowing us down a little bit. That's all. Correct. Okay. Um, thanks. Thanks, Dan. I just want to clarify that. And then, um, Mike, do we start the construction uh, or the road replacement over at Chapel Hill yet? So they did not start today. Probably due to the weather. Right. Okay. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Uh, next, the building and health, Trustee Zelensky. No report this evening, Mayor. Roger, um, thank you. Um, how far are we, are we with um, Yafo's property? We were talking about with um, permits. The, um, it's been We had a conversation, Trustee Murphy, right before the meeting this evening, myself and Roger, regarding um, the health department. Our health department person has got an authorized leave right now that she's on. She'll be back soon. But Roger's been giving um, the uh, health um, off, uh, her supervisor, Ken Pan Panarella, mm -hmm. where he, we're assigning him at least five uh, projects every Friday when he comes in. That's his usual schedule with us when he comes in to or, uh, review her uh, citations and whatnot. But we're assigning him at least five jobs every Friday when he comes in. So well, he'll be doing that. the inspections himself. Exactly. <laughs> so to, just to keep up to speed while she's out of the office for a little bit and stuff <laughs> then too. And um, I want to I want to tell everybody I want to really I told Roger earlier I really want to compliment Mr. Early. He's doing a great job in our department. Um, uh, we've been working to try and clean up some really some um, areas that need to be addressed. And last week Roger had um, first development clean up all that property just west of Lighthouse Church on 127th Street. They actually came in with home or tree service and leveled the entire property, and it looks absolutely great when you come off the expressway ramp. That was such a mess. That, that whole thing is almost flat over there right now then, too. looks nice. Yeah, and we're also addressing the areas over near um, uh, Impel Union and Yafo's right now, where that fence line was a little bit tore up. And actually, Yafo just put in for, uh, he wants to start, uh, something like uh, he does a lot of uh, insurance work. He, you know that repair shop on Cicero. He's got a lot of uh, name name insurance companies he's doing work for. But in some cases, he can repair those cars and, and sell those. He's in an industrial area, which is applicable for car sales. He's going to be applying for a um, a license to sell vehicles, which is going to clear up clean up Cicero Avenue at the same time. You're not going to have some of those cars that they, you do now. He's going to have some good-looking stuff sitting out in front. So it's it's a small win for us, and especially next door at Impel Union. They're doing all that work on their offices right now, too. It's going to clean up that corner nicely and stuff then, too. So very good, Roger. Nice job. Thank you. Uh, next, we had the uh, Human Resource and Insurance, Trustee Murphy. No report tonight, Mayor. Thank did you. Did Janae sneak out on us? She did ask if it was okay. Did you want to talk? I'm sorry. Um, no, I just wanted to bring it up that um, I got a phone call last week um, from a retiree. And that individual just wanted to express, um, one, their gratitude for the help that Janae was able to provide and um, highly uh, commended her professionalism and promptness in dealing with their concerns. Um, the issue involved basically it was a screw up by the former HR manager <laughs> and Sinead was able to resolve the issue um, in a timely fashion and to the satisfaction of this individual and they said they just they said they contacted me they thought the trustees might like to hear good things about employees every once in a while so. absolutely I'll, I'll share it with her tomorrow she did ask if she could be excused so I'll let her know mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Next is the um, Village Property, Trustee McLaughlin. Um, I'm sorry, Economic Development, Trustee Navas Barza. No report, Mayor. We did, um, Trustee, we did this uh, this evening. I sent you a copy. We're looking at the brochure from Delabroto Real Estate right now. I referred that to our attorney for him to look at to make sure that language looks accurate. Plus, we may want to, we want to, we may, we, I think we want to adjust that a little bit. Nothing's been approved yet, but I want Gary Perlman to, to review that language okay. uh, before that brochure, brochure goes out. Okay. okay. Because there, there's a whole check, you know, there's a whole um, bidder's requirement thing. That's why I want him to look at that to make sure we're, we're asking the appropriate work. And Kent, I'll, I'll, I'll get that to you tomorrow as, as well then too, okay? Excuse me, Mayor. Yeah. Is the Mannheim group still uh, working through the, out the end of this month? He's actually there. We're going to meet with them uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. Tomorrow, Becky's going to get, um, I have to attend a um, cannabis uh, seminar tomorrow with <laughs> HR. And um, <laughs> Don't eat the brownies. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we're, we're actually, we're going to, you know where it's at? Where are they serving for lunch? You know where it's at? We're going to Hamburger U over at um, McDonald's University there. We're going in, in um, Oak, Oak Brook. And, um, but uh, no, the, Wednesday will be their last day, and I had a really nice, I had a good meeting with them last week, and um, they did ask for, and I, I, I said certainly I'll, I'll give them a letter of referral and stuff then too. They did a, they I did was a just surprised not to us. see them here this evening because I figured they'd give us a final rundown. No, we're, we, you know what, I'll be providing that to everyone tomorrow. Becky's going to get a wrap up with them, and I'll talk to them on Wednesday as well. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Village Properties, Justin McLaughlin. Okay, I apologize for not having it on the agenda tonight, but um, our waste removal contract is up for the heritage properties. So um, I will have it on the agenda for next week for formal approval of a request to go out for um, go out to bid on new waste removal contracts. That and that covers both complexes. Right. That number we confirmed today exceeded. Um, it, yeah, it exceeds 20, the minimum 000. for right. So for we bids, have to so. we have to get a couple of bids on or three, at least three bids on it. When does the contract go up? It yeah, it, it just expired, right? So um, next we'll have the ordinance legislation. Trustee Zelinsky. Mm -hmm. Have a request to approve an ordinance amending Chapter Twelve licenses, permits, and business regulations, mm -hmm. Article Twenty Three, mm -hmm. Landlord Licensing. Section 12-700, Definitions and Section 12-708, Crime-Free Housing, and Chapter 13, Miscellaneous Provisions and Offenses, Article 2, Firearms and Weapons, Section 13-38, Unlawful Possession of Cannabis, Penalties, and Section 13-39, Unlawful Possession or Sale of Drug Paraphernalia of the Municipal Code of the Village of Alsip. Also, I have a request for approval of an ordinance of the Village of Alsip amending Chapter 4, Alcoholic Beverages and Liquor Control, Article 2, Administration and Enforcement, Division 2, License, Section 4-69, Limitation on Total Number of Licenses of the, Vill of the Alsip Municipal Code, and that is all I have this evening. Um, question on that one so we're addressing classification FG which that's the new one for gas stations so where does the number of nine licenses come from Be Becky you want to speak to that hey. or Roger which whichever yeah you want to we want to get this on a recorder please you have the speedway at 127th you've got the shell at uh, I'm sorry 127th is the Speedway, the 711 at 127th and Pulaski. You've got the Shell at 117th and Pulaski. You've got the Shell at 131st and Cicero. You've got the BP at 123rd, 122nd and Cicero. You've got the Marathon gas station on 115th. You've got the... 111th Street and the Sicko on 111th. I'm sorry, both of those, that's seven. Um, gas Depot? Gas yep. Depot is eight. And you got Speedway on Route 83. The Speedway at Route 83, which they would be doing a build-out. It, it, does the pilot on 127th and Kedzie have anything? 
they haven't asked for it they at this point. They already have gaming. Mm -hmm. it's a, right. They're, 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 they're a true okay. truck stop, okay. right? Sorry. So are you, we're just basically limiting it to the amount of gas stations we have in town? No, you've got the one at 122nd, the shell on, on the other side, which does not make the 800 square feet. But have they all applied or they've all reached this so that they can all have it they've all reached out to me except for the shell at 122nd on the east side of Cicero none have been approved yet none have been approved I want to say actually the one that's been approved is the the new 7-eleven right well it, it, we just said we would create a license for it. we haven't approved any license for them they haven't applied they still need a business license and all that Right, after but construction. They've, they've all reached out. They've all done their due diligence. They've given me proposals on it. Like I said, the one at Route 83 and, and 127th, the Speedway, they're planning on doing a build-out to meet it, meet the requirements. Anybody else? Mm. Um, then we'll move on then. The IT, Trustee Dalzell. No report, Mayor. All right. And um, planning and zoning and licenses. Oh, we already covered that, Trustee Juarez. Anything else? No. Okay. Any presentations, petitions, or communications? Anybody? None. Any unfinished business? None. Any new business? Go ahead, Ken. All right, we're good. Oh. The. Uh, the grant from the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus slash Commonwealth Edison, you may remember that was for $8,500 after we made the purchases in accordance with the grant, turned in the necessary paperwork and everything else. It just came, uh, and, and then they followed their end of their end of the grant for the $4,250. I've got the check, which I gave to Kent to touch base with the clerk as to if you want to put it under DEP grants or, or what you want to do with it. But I just want to let the board know that it has, it, they, they completed their bargain. Congratulations. Thank you again, Chuck, for applying for that. Good job. Mm -hmm. um, we recovered uh, closed session. So can I get a motion to adjourn the committee meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, adjourning the committee meeting at 8.50 p.m. Right. Give me just one minute, please, and we'll start the um, board meeting aspect of this. Certainly, so, Danny can be excused from this. If Mike, yeah, sure. No. Absolutely not. Does this need signed, or you did yeah. that already? I did. Oh. I did not. Yeah, you, you hey, might come in and Here you go, ma'am. I'm trying to get my jokes. <laughs> okay, all set? Yep. All right. All right, I'd like to call to order uh, a special, a Village of Elsa special Village Board meeting of trustees. Uh, again, today is July 29th, 2019. We'll call the special meeting to order at uh, 8.52 p.m. And would you call the uh, roll, please? Sure. Uh, Trustee Dalzell? Here. Trustee Zielinski? Here. Trustee Juarez? Here. Trustee McLawhorn? Here. Trustee Murphy? Here. Trustee Navas Barza? Here. Mayor Ryan? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Because this special board meeting followed a committee meeting, which we did uh, acknowledge a Pledge of Allegiance, I'm going to waive it and uh, continue on with the meeting. Uh, next, we uh, have a public, before we get to the subject, we have a public forum. Did anyone in the audience wish to address the board this evening? No one? All right, then I'd like to move forward with the standing committee report. Uh, the only item on this agenda this evening is the Police and Traffic Safety Committee, uh, chaired by Trustee Dalzell. Go ahead, sir. Mayor, we've got uh, three options with regards to uh, the automated red light traffic enforcement program for the Village of Alsip. Uh, proposal one would be the approval of a three-year contract 
with census gatso uh, option number two would be the approval of a three-year contract with safe speed and option number three is kind of a hybrid where is it approval of a two-year contract for both census gatso and safe speed to provide the red light enforcement programs uh, and it outlines at where those locations are uh, we had had a committee meeting on the 22nd of July and uh, we discussed some of the different things uh, one of the questions uh, ended with uh, the requirement for a proposed contract and uh, the attorney uh, returned that uh, everything was submitted fine by both of the entities uh, and uh, so we can proceed forward from there Um, I think discussed and from my own side of it is, is that uh, as I had said from the very beginning is that uh, I was impressed <coughs> with uh, both of the company's presentations and uh, I think that uh, had we selected either of them uh, the village would be in uh, fine hands uh, census Gatso, uh looking at what the numbers were from last year uh, their pricing came in uh, more in favor of the village and it seemed to be the cheaper of the two to that regards um, the matter was brought out with regards to the safe speed and the uh, quantity of citations being issued uh, and there was some discussion that was held at that point in time so open to the floor uh, first of all I'd like to uh, say I'd, I'd like to actually have uh, number three under the standing committees removed because it's uh, it's really not ethical you, you, right there you change the RFP without after the submissions already came in the changes only benefit one vendor and the terms I mean you even said a two-year contract versus a three-year contract which was in the RFP so there's there's too many changes and it was like uh, pretty much after the 11th hour already it's it's uh, so I don't think that should even be uh, I would agree with you uh, to, to eliminate that that whole um, using two uh, systems I, it, it's it was a uh, it was an idea um, actually that um, I had spoke with uh, trustee Dalzell and actually even the police chief and I did defer that's why I copied in your packet I did defer to our attorney he goes certainly you can use two systems if you chose the only thing with that um, trustees is sometimes you, we could be indirectly incurring more work for our police department and whereas you know you always want to streamline that process if possible you know I last thing I want to do is it's enough that uh, you know we feel it's it's important to the safety for our community um, but that we do have to have a um, either we, we do have to have a uh, qualified policeman review all those citations and sometimes too uh, some, uh, I, I was just say hypothetically hopefully it does it never happens but let's just say you had a driver that was misunderstood and went through multiple lights within our town and all of a sudden they want to review the citations and it's like well wait a minute what color ticket do you got you know you're gonna go to one system you're gonna go to the other system and so on and so forth it, it, it could become confusing to, to some people and again we only put that in there I, I only put that in there as an option and, and on behalf of the uh, committee it, it could certainly have been amended if the board wished to pursue that option but it was just an idea but I would I, I do feel that um, I would like to see the board go with one one company or the other uh, just to simplify life I know so. some municipalities do go with more than one right and uh, you know I thought it might have even been a decent idea because it would give uh, another vendor chance to prove themselves mm -hmm. but uh, at this time I, I think it should just be removed right I mean, that's certainly it's up to the board uh, whatever they wish to do um. if I can chime in um, I was present at the um, board the committee meeting on Monday last Monday and just some data was presented to us that um, I had questions about just quality like quality of um, the services provided uh, based on previous years where um, I believe there was a test camera that was set up above um, Catholic, uh cameras and the number of citations that were captured or um, were, were greater than what the, the camera that was existing there um, and also comparable uh, communities were presented to us that had cameras that were issued for example hometown that had one 
I believe, if, if, um, Mayor, if it was a safe speed camera. Yes. Um, that ca captured 5,641 citations with one camera um, versus LSIP 7 um, with the current, I believe, the current vendor. We only had 7,679 citations that were issued. So just if we're going to pay for a service, um, kind of like what are we getting? What's the quality of that service? Um, and it's more so about the enforcement side for public safety. And but if the cameras aren't performing or the services aren't performing, then then what exactly are we paying for, um, based on on previous ex um, experience? Um, also, Safe Speed provided a contract, just de detailing more in detail as to what um, we'll be getting out of the con you know the services that we we c we were if we were to contract them for. Um, whereas I was thumbing through the the um, RFP or the bid proposal from Gatto and I didn't locate a contract. So I wasn't sure kind of what the, the, the fine print would entail as well. So th those are some of the reservations that I had in regards to, um, you know, in regards to considering which company over the other, just data from previous um, experience, uh, comparable communities that have used um, certain systems and so forth like that or certain um, vendors. Um, and then also just with the the contract not being present as well, kind of like what are we getting our, you know, in regards to the services. Can this side of the room, any, any questions? I'm sorry, actually Trustee El Trusty Dalzal should be asking that. This is his, <laughs> this is his, it's um, his meeting. It's his meeting right now. Uh, just to speak to a couple of those, uh, first of all, the camera that uh, SafeSpeed put up was basically just a video camera, correct? No, I think it was. It wasn't a, an actual traffic camera that I, they used. No, it was, a, it was a regular traffic camera, yes. It has to be in order to record that, that information. Well, it really doesn't have to be. It could have been just a video camera because. But if no. it's a video camera, it requires an individual to sit there and to review that. As and didn't they do that, though? Didn't the they? The police department did review it. The police department it. did and everything. Yes. Yeah. So, but I mean. With a typical submittal, right? Okay. Um, second of all, for the amount of uh, violations that are caught by one camera or another, or one vendor or another, there's also uh, a difference in parameters that, you know, qualify as a violation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty positive that uh, Safe Speed has much more stringent um, uh, uh, parameters for getting a violation uh, to where I believe uh, our current vendor has uh, a much more benevolent view of, uh, you know. Actually, these are based on business rules. Okay. And the municipality set the well, business rule. We do set that, correct. So if we wanted to tighten those up, we're definitely more than uh, able to do so. In any company you're using, the, mis the municipality always says final say in what we agree was a good violation. They can, th they can send us, uh, even now, our current vendor, they can send us, say, 400 violations in a month, and we might say, 350, we might say 300 are good. Whatever we felt was a good violation. No, no, you're, you're not understanding. Uh, uh, let me uh, try this again. Um, when a car uh, maybe only slows down to a certain speed. Does a rolling stop. Yes. Okay, um, I see what you're saying. Some municipalities or, or governments actually require a complete stop, and we could too. So, like I said, if you're going to compare one to the other, we have to actually compare and on the same parameters for a violation. We can't go with uh, our current vendor versus somebody else going, well, that's a violation when well, it I technically wouldn't be a violation that we're currently using unless you want to, uh, you know, tighten that, up the rules. That's understood, but that's still a discretion of every police department. That, that and, and they're never, we we're not going to post yeah. that, you know. I can. Hmm. Your office sets those parameters. We, no, we don't. Uh, the police department does. But you do when we make the... I've never once discussed any of this with the police department. I've been here for two years. I have never once discussed parameters of a, of a citation. So you're saying that nothing's going to change if we have a new vendor in town? No, I'm not the saying... The parameters I, I are going to be exactly that. the same. 
I would say it's still on the discretion of what our police department de declares as a decides as a good violation. Um, I've never once uh, intervened. I've never once looked at a violation like, like that to decide what what what's a good parameter. I've never. But a done year that. ago, we actually shortened the time. We did make a change to. Sure. What time? We have a representative from our uh, current vendor. Could we have well, him come up and speak to this? Well, the the the, um, the what you call it? Whatever parameters were discussed with the police and the vendor were ne are never discussed with like us. I mean, uh, Trustee Dalzell, you've been here as long as I have. Have you ever had that discussion with any vendor? No, sir. No, nor have I. No, that's a discussion that the police department has with their discretionary method. If they want to share that information with the vendor, that's their prerogative. But that's never anything that, that the, the mayor's office or any other officer does. We, we don't discuss that at all. And, you know, certainly that's why we, we offer the um, folks that wish to challenge a violation that we do that once a month here. We've got a hearing officer here with the police department to review. review. And, and, you know, I don't even, I don't even sit down on those. It's, it's basically none of my business. It's a, it's a violation. It's something between the um, the person who was issued the, the citation. The, the business rules are established. The vendor implements that into their system. Based upon those business rules, they approve the citations. This could be. Moves to the police department by be. state law. The police department is the final authority to say yes or no for the issuance of the citation. So even if you had no business rules whatsoever. Whoever the vendor is would send 10,000 violations. The police department may or may not authorize any of them. That camera is set to go off if it hits. You can't turn on red. Well, taking it also a step back is also, it has to capture, I guess, the, the violation, and then it would go down streamlined through the police department and so forth. So if it's not capturing the, site, the violation, then kind of like those discussions wouldn't be had, right? So in, in regards to selecting a vendor, it's we're paying for a service. Is the equipment capturing the violation? So then the police department can determine if that's a violation or not, or merits a, a citation. Very good. Because I was just wondering if those test cameras actually used our parameters or if they were something different, which I, the, actually, obviously at the, I don't know. I actually looked up the minutes from that, and um, back when when that took place, that was actually um, the report that Chief Miller gave. And I, this was September 9th, 2017. Um, actually, I was trying to copy the minutes, but um, basically Chief Miller just said he agreed that he didn't think that at the time the uh, cameras were functioning correctly, and he authorized the um, test camera to be put up. That was totally through the police department to do such. And um, he actually, um, on a 24-hour camera, on a 24-hour clock at 127th and Cicero, um, he did such uh, to test that, you know, to, to mount, it was mounted um, in similar fashion. And then the same thing down at 127. He did a different week, same time, same parameter. He did at 127th and Pulaski, make sure it was, wasn't a fluke, just to, to prove up. And uh, he was satisfied with the uh, review from the police department if there were worthy citations or not. Can we have the Gatzel representative stand up and clear up the non-captured violations? Well, we actually, you know, this would actually be, um, it's not, a, we don't have uh, anybody on the agenda uh, to speak to this matter tonight. And um, unless the entire board uh, wanted to hear from a representative, but I didn't, uh, we didn't invite any other representatives from any other company to be here as well either. I mean, so he's here. here. I'd, I'd hate to see him uh, waste the trip, and if he's got some information that he can provide that uh, would uh, enlighten the uh, situation, then I think it's important that we know. Thank you, sir. Do you mind? Well, it would still be. Uh, does the board wish to the board wish to hear from uh, one vendor and not the other? I don't see a problem with it. Okay. All right. That's fine. Mr. Noble, please. Mr. Mayor, how are you tonight? Good. Um, Trustee Navarra, as far as I thank, uh, to your point about the contract, um, the city has our contract. Uh, our contract wouldn't change from the current uh, program you have to the new program. 
the only sole change would be the compensation page uh, would include the compensation language we submitted in the RFP. So you have our contract in detail. It wouldn't change at all. Um, to the point about the test camera, and um, we were fortunate enough to be um, viewing some of those council minutes ourselves uh, quite some time ago now, I can't talk to what kind of camera they did, or in, did not install. I can talk to the point that they did not tie into the traffic signal controller, uh, which is what it determines the red light violation itself. Um, it's much more complicated than just having a camera looking at a, a field of view over an intersection. You have to have separate controllers uh, connections to the camera itself, so the camera knows when the light changed successfully from green to yellow to red. That essentially allows the, ca the image to be captured. Um, so you have a radar in both our camera and that of the other vendor, which sees a vehicle approaching the stop line at, let's say, 45 miles an hour, and the radar determines through a computer that this car is going to run the red light. And what it does essentially is it fires the trigger off as long as the light's turned red. Now, the business rules in uh, OLSIP and predominantly most municipalities throughout the country, actually, suggest that when the light turns red, you allow a one uh, point one of a second more delay before taking the photograph. That is called a grace period. It's generally uh, to stop people suggesting it's just a gotcha uh, to raise cash. Um, so the light turns red, and then you can take a camera after that. I can tell you that during the safe speed trial, no matter how sophisticated their technology was, they were not tied into the traffic signal controller. Those parameters are missing. Um, to the point about uh, a year ago of tightening up some of the violation statistics, you're right, Mayor. Uh, the police department asked us to uh, send through all right turn on red violations uh, where the vehicle had not come to a complete stop. Uh, we did that, uh, but you're all correct, uh, uh, Trustee Dalzell. It's the police department themselves that make up their own mind. So whether we send them 400 or 4,000 or 30, they determine solely what goes out as a citation. Um, I can tell you we send out uh, every notice we do, to the, uh, every violation comes to the police department where vehicles do not come to a complete stop. The police department makes its own determination whether it wants to send those or not. Um, it depends on the officer making the reviews at the time. Um, but we've stayed very closely in touch with the Deputy Chief Schultz, who seems to be deputized by Chief Miller to run the program. And uh, his team has done a sterling job over the last year and a half. Just to circle back about the contract, um, I think it would just be best practice just to submit it since, um, in essence, it's a new term that we would be entering. Um, and also, I don't want to assume that it's just going to be the exact same contract as well. Um, so that's why I did bring it up. Of course. And that's exactly what I stated last week about the police officers individually um, letting, deciding what's going to be um, a violation and what's not. He just cleared that up. Same thing. That's what I said. That's what we said, that the police decide. That's their discretion. Mm -hmm. okay, well, thank you, Mr. Noble. Appreciate Could it. Could you sign in, please, sir? Mr. Noble. In. You're in the front. In the front. Yeah, sign in. Just skip a few lines. So aside from the aside from the test that was uh, we were just speaking to, um, I asked uh, we distributed last at last Monday's meeting. I asked um, our accounting department to give us a spreadsheet on how many citations have been issued over the last three years. Uh, in fiscal year 16, with four cameras active, the village um, issued 5,318 citations. In fiscal year 2017, with the same four cameras, the village issued um, 4,473 citations. In fiscal year 18, the, vi the um, village still had the same four cameras and issued even less. We were at 4,157 uh, citations. And then last year, per contract that was signed in 2016, three more cameras were added uh, to our system, which now brought the number back up to 7,679 violations issued. Uh, currently, for the last two months, uh, May, 562 citations were issued. In June, five, uh, one additional, it was 563 citations were issued. In comparison, um, let's say for one year, uh, being last year, from July of 2018 to July of 2019, uh, nearby communities, and we, I, uh, we, I just took a couple of communities. 
uh, just to compare to. And um, as Trustee Navas Barza alluded to, was um, say hometown. They've got one camera, and the, you know, again, it's their discretion. Uh, we have no. I have no idea what their parameters are. As Trustee Dalzell mentioned last week, uh, different communities have different parameters. What they consider a good a good citation. Uh, Last year, hometown issued 5,641 violations on one camera. Burbank has five. And uh, we have all the, uh, I, I distributed all the locations to everyone, too, to show which, which intersections they were. Burbank's got five cameras. They issued 54,454 violations. That's an average of 907 per camera per month. Oak Lawn is less than half of what we have. Uh, they've had three cameras. And they, they issued 8,035 citations, the average of 223 per camera per month. And Evergreen Park has four cameras. And again, I don't know what their business parameters are, but they issued 73,658 citations. That's, that's an average of almost 1,534 per month. ALSIP has seven cameras, and we issued 7,679 violations. That's an average of 91 citations per camera per month which would they're not all the same obviously but which it was just an average but uh, all the locations I distributed to the board uh, last Monday night the thing is those intersections aren't in our town so it really doesn't make that much of a difference you got to compare it to apples what to the traffic is here mm -hmm. I believe Trustee Dalzell said that we've got in one direction alone near 127th to the sister. I, I believe you mentioned 80,000 cars in one direction per day. 53,000 southbound. 53,000 southbound. Okay. What are the traffic numbers at these other intersections? Well, we know 127th to Cicero has always been one of the busiest intersections in the entire state. Right. Mm -hmm. So you don't know? Eastbound, 111th, and Cicero is 24,500 vehicles, average annual daily traffic. So half of what our southbound traffic is. And yet that particular intersection, that particular camera is averaging 186 violations per month as opposed to the 91 that we were talking about. Did we say that um, Castle was the cheaper of the two? Is that yes. Yes. yes? So, Trustee Dalzell, did you want to um, did you want to pull any, or did you? You've got three options here. Um, well, I, I think we've just got our number three. Right. So, we have, uh, <laughs> so officially under removal of items from the consent agenda. Option C. Remove no, remove C. Yep. So and I think we have uh, door number A and door number B. Well, then let's. Um, if, if I could just make one more point to this uh, if you take the violations that also I mean we all know that uh, they had we had camera problems back in 16 okay they came out they replaced uh, parts got it back up to speed so anything back 16 and 17 can't really use as an actual uh, benchmark okay so how how do you know that that wouldn't reoccur today i mean it, it's it's a well it could reoccur with equipment's any equipment's equipment you know right it can happen with any company right. really so. i guess my issue with all of that going back to 16 and 17 was the fact that we had to tell them that it wasn't working properly and again I mean, why wouldn't that be any different with another company so no well, in other words i mean as she just said the village had to inform the contractor. I understand that. Right. Well, there's supposed to be, according to the proposals and everything, safeguards within the system to identify when it's not working properly. And yet, that didn't happen. Well, I, I think that the current vendor's software 
has been improved and in looking at their literature i mean they demonstrate in spars a dashboard that shows the uh, the health of the system um i think that we're a little bit culpable ourselves in the performance back in the day uh, we had different people administering the program and probably to a different level than what we have <laughs> at present i can agree with that <laughs> but outside of the problems that we had and had corrected if you take the violations also perceived in the past 12 months and plugged it into both business models you can see that our current vendor gives us over seventy thousand dollars more a year in in uh, revenue it's not about money it's not about, well being that you know safety and technology is fairly equal i'm just saying at this point the difference the difference is is that this is not about money it's this not is about safety and we are to pick this the vendor best suited to sit there and to improve the safety of the people who travel through the village of also well that's even better than all these intersections that you had uh, got all these citations from from other communities how has their safety improved because we know how ours improved tonight the trustee we're only considering as trustee Dalzell just said we're only considering a system tonight we're not we're not challenging the um, the safety of the intersection so we, we're not we don't that wasn't the conversation but we're, we know our safety has improved by 50 percent on 127th and Cicero alone I only know that before cameras and versus after cameras, it's reduced accidents by over 40 percent. I can't speak to a daily events. You know, that no, I don't think anybody could. I can tell you if the chief was still sitting here, I believe we still average close to 86 accidents a year at one in, in, one intersection alone in our village. So and that's that, you know again, you can't speak to every single accident. And but again, we're talking about violations it, it could be a number of things and and not every accident is alleviated by red light enforcement right mm -hmm. in fact some accidents are increased because of red light enforcement but I'm thinking that when we were talking about safety back in the day we were talking about fatalities well this is the most serious and that's obviously the the biggest concern is the severity so speed doesn't cause an accident it just increases the likelihood of injury or death so like I said if safety and technology are equal the only thing that's left is revenue and if we go with a new vendor outside of our current one over a three-year contract we're going to be losing out on two hundred and ten thousand dollars plus in lost revenue that's inaccurate. You're saying, trustee, that we're going to lose a quarter million dollars. Two hundred. Quarter million dollars. That's that's based upon the same issuances of citations. As you just said, trustee. And, you know, first off, I I think you'd have to have numbers to back that up. A quarter million dollars. We do. We actually had them out last week at the meeting. So um, at this time, trustees. Well, wait. I, uh, secondly, if we don't go with our current vendor tonight at midnight the camera shut off okay it'll take approximately nine to ten months for our which will be our old trustee vendor. now excuse me trustee. IDOT. first off you cannot uh, per idot you idot will not allow you to have two systems up at the same time i understand that if you okay, let me so finish, you don't have a choice in the matter it's idot that determines that not us exactly but it would take nine to ten months for our current vendor to remove their equipment, IDOT to permit everything. Actually, our new vendor per, per to our contract, install and per our contract, the current vendor, uh, it does say that they have to remove their, their equipment within 30 days. That's in our contract. So their, their stuff is down within a month. And we don't know how quickly it, we may be keeping the same vendor. If we do go to a, a new vendor, we don't know what the timetable is with that. That's undetermined. If it took nine to ten months, you're talking another two hundred forty thousand dollars. So Could now be, you're throwing a hundred, a half a million dollars away on a hypothetical that we may be getting new or more violations with another camera company. 
I, you know, never once did we discuss revenue here at all. And secondly, that's like saying uh, you can only sign up with one company and you're married to it forever. I didn't say that. Well, I'm saying there, what's the other option? What's the alternative? I just know that in about six months we're going to be going to the taxpayers with a tax levy. And if you're going to disregard a half a million dollars. I would never put the. I would, I would not. never. I would never put the, I would never put the budget taxpayers. I would never balance the budget on the back of citations. That's totally unfair. I would I never ever ever do that. Oh. If we're going to adopt a system, <laughs> we're just going to adopt a system. That's that's where we're at. Uh, that's fine, but the loss of revenue starts tonight. So, so trustees, uh, we did. Unless anyone said different about letter C. As regarding uh, the removal of any items on the consent agenda, we did re we did remove letter C. Does anyone dispute that? No. No. Okay. No. And do, does anyone wish to remove any other item on the consent agenda? All right. Then apparently, and then we're going to make a motion to us uh, establish the consent agenda. Well, we 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 can't have the consent agenda with. We can't vote on Opposite directions. <laughs> it's going to be one or the other, but it can't be an approval. Trustee, do you want to do a, um, I'm not sure, in other words, I, the way I was looking at it was if we're going to vote yes or no to the first one and yes or no to the second. Otherwise, you're voting up front. Um, Mayor, can I add something um, to the conversation? before that decision is made. <laughs> um, just circling back to the RFP process, um, item F about the contract award. Um, item number one, the contractor's proposal must be complete to be considered for the award. And item two, the village reserves the right to qualify, accept, or reject any or all contractors and accept any proposal deemed to be in the best interest of the village. And also with the RFP process, um, it kind of what are, message are we sending to uh, other RFP processes? If um, incomplete, in my opinion, incomplete um, proposals are submitted and we allow them to, to move forward. And I, I did highlight in the committee meeting the lack of a contract uh, by one of the vendors. Um, Our attorney already said that it was a complete contract. He, he said it would have made the, the task easier uh, had it been included. This way we understood the terms right up front. And uh, there less opportunity for any renegotiation, should that be the case. But, but there was, was nothing complete. there to disregard either vendor. But it was still complete. No, and, and Mr. Dolby, I think, cleared that up very well. And not only that, but if you look at the sample contract that the other vendor sent, it's like Swiss cheese. We still have to negotiate the terms and fill it in. I mean, there's no dates. There's no... There, there's a lot missing. If you look at the, if you actually read the sample contract, it is what it is. It's a sample. Right. So, if you're going to go by that aspect, then you might as well throw out that contract as well. Well, I don't even know what the current contract looks like either. So. You could ask anybody, the clerk, anybody. We can give you a copy of it. Well, going back to the consent agenda, if we've only got two options, um, again, I, I think by even doing a consensus, we are, um, we're not necessarily voting on it, but we could do a consensus to support either letter A or letter B and pursue it at that point. Uh, regardless, it's still going to be a vote at the end of the day. But, um, you know, I wasn't, a part of the last Monday night's meeting, and I apologize for not being there, but um, looking at the citations analysis, the numbers are just staggering, you know, as far as what's on here. We have the most cameras, and everyone just trumps us big time. I don't know if it's parameters or defective equipment or what, but you'd think it would be remotely close, even with seven cameras. I mean, hometown has one. And there's a 2,000 difference. One camera versus seven. We have the busiest intersection around, 127th. 
again it has to do with the parameters this is why we've never been on channel seven this is why we've never had a class action lawsuit i mean there are certain things that go on with certain vendors that just don't make the cut and if you're willing to do that then that's on you guys and, and it's hard to say i don't personally believe that we can look at simply the quantity of cameras because Quite frankly, we may have deployed cameras that are ineffective. I've, I've gotten red light tickets, and they sent me videos where I did not come to a complete stop. Yeah, and no, it was actually in Rosemont, but um, I paid it. Um, I, I don't know what the parameters are, you know. But a, to me, a violation is a violation. Did you stop? Was it a rolling stop? What, what what constitutes a violation? But I paid it. Are you talking left turn, straight through, or right turn? It was a right turn. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Trustee. Uh, so we have to get back to establishing a consent agenda here. So if we're going to remove one item, we can certainly go back to vote on it again, or we can have discussion on it after which after we vote on whichever item stays. Uh, did anyone wish to remove any of the, the remaining A or B items? I'd like to remove uh, number two. I would also like to remove number two. Letter B. Number two. Oh, letter B, yes. You want to remove B? I would like to remove letter B from consideration. We're going to do one or the other. Mm -hmm. So, again, we can't go and do it, do them both. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I think Trustee does all is right. I think we're going to need a. Um, I think we're going to need a consensus. consensus. Why did you ask? I don't one or the other. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to go around here in circles over a bunch. Right. I think the easiest way is just for each trustee to say which one that they're in favor of because otherwise we're going to remove one or the other, vote yes or no, and then just it's confusing to me. I would rather have everyone just sit there and say, are you in favor of Getzo or are you in favor of Safe Speed? And then the majority of whatever, then that goes off to the decision for that I agree. That sounds good because that way everybody shows their opinion. I would leave it to the clerk to call out the names then to to narrow that down. So this is not a roll call. It is just a consensus. Consensus and which uh, to pursue A or B. Okay. in no particular order <laughs> for, 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 a, for a final vote right um trustee delzell are you in favor of gatso or are you in favor of safe speed uh safe speed please trustee zelinsky are you in favor of gatso or are you in favor of safe speed i'm in favor of gatso trustee juarez are you in favor of gatso or are you in favor of safe speed i'm in favor of gatso Trustee McLawhorn, are you in favor of Gatso or are you in favor of Safe Speed? I have no opinion. Trustee Murphy, are you in favor of Gatso or are you in favor of Safe Speed? I'm in favor of Safe Speed. Trustee Nava Asparza, are you in favor of Gatso or are you in favor of Safe Speed? I'm in favor of Safe Speed. So after consensus, there are two trustees in favor of Gatso, there are three trustees in favor of Safe Speed, and there is one trustee neutral. Present, right. All right, so with that, to establish a consent agenda. So, Mayor, I'd make the motion for the approval of a three year contract with Safe Speed LLC to provide the red light camera enforcement for the village of Alsip using the seven existing camera locations approved by IDOT. Second. I need a second, please. Second.
Roll call number one for the approval of a three-year contract with SafeSpeed LLC to provide red light camera enforcement for the Village of Alsip using seven existing camera locations approved by IDOT. Again, this is roll call number one. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. No. Trustee Juarez. No. Trustee McLaughlin. I abstain. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Nava Esparza. Yes. Mayor Ryan. Yes. Motion carries to approve the three year contract with Safe Speed LLC to provide red light camera enforcement for the Village of Alsip using seven existing camera locations approved by IDOT. All right, thank you. Uh, trustees, um, uh, any presentations, petitions, or communications to follow this meeting? Any unfinished business? A new business. Motion to adjourn, Mayor. Can I do a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. We'll adjourn this meeting at 9.35 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience this evening, too, folks. Enjoy your evening. Mm -hmm.